In this video, you'll learn the following things. How to set up a new DevExtreme ASP.NET Core project using our project template. Include Entity Framework and scaffold the model classes and DB contexts for the Dev AV sample database that comes with our demos. Then we'll use our powerful scaffolding tools to generate a web API controller which supports CRUD operations and insert a DevExtreme grid into a Razor page. We'll start creating a new project by using Control Shift N in Visual Studio. Select the DevExtreme ASP.NET Core application, click Next, and name the project. Here, we'll create the look and feel for the application. Our project template provides you with a bootstrap or material design based application. For this video, we'll select Material Design and click Create. After the wizard finishes its process, we'll run the application and see what it looks like. And here is the grid, which has some basic data included. You can see the grid has paging and search capabilities. Before we insert a DevExtreme grid, we first need to configure the app to use Entity Framework. Let's open the Package Manager console and include Microsoft's Entity Framework Core SQL Server package. While with .NET Framework, there's a wizard which will scaffold the model and DB context classes from an existing database. With .NET Core, this is done by using the Package Manager console. For this, we need to install Microsoft's Entity Framework Core Tools package. Once the package has been added, we can use the scaffold db context command. Note that I specify the output dir parameter, which makes sure the model and db context classes are created in a subfolder ef of the models folder. After the command has finished, we'll see the folder ef with all the ef model classes appear in the solution. Before using the DevExtreme scaffolder, there are a couple of things we need to configure. In models, ef, devavcontext.cs, we need to remove the onConfiguring method or at least comment out the code. Then insert the connection string in the appsettings.json file. In the configure services method of the startup class, we need to register a service for the entity framework so we can have a DB context injected in parts of our application. We can do this by adding the following code. We need to resolve the namespaces for dev AV context and the use SQL Server extension method by placing the cursor and pressing Shift Alt F10. Let's compile the project and make sure everything is in place. Open the index.cshtml and remove the sample data grid. Right click with the mouse and select Insert Dev Extreme Control here. Once the wizard appears, we can select Data Grid on the Control tab and click Next. On the Data Binding tab, select our scaffolded DB context class, which will be the Dev AV context. Then I'll select the model class we want to display. For this video, I'll choose Products. Then we just need to select a Web API controller, which will be used by the Data Grid to exchange data. I'll create a new one. On the Settings tab, we can select the columns that we want to have in the grid. And we can specify whether we want to enable CRUD operations on the grid as well. Once we click Add, the scaffolder will first set up a Web API controller with a Select Action method, and it will also add the action methods for Insert, Update, and Delete, depending on the checkboxes in the wizard. The wizard is completed once the data grid configuration has been inserted in the Razor page. As you can see, all options are configured as specified in the wizard, like the action methods, columns, and CRUD operations allowed.
The scaffolder also created a fully operational asynchronous products controller. Because we configured the dependency injection in the startup class earlier, a dev AV context will be injected in the constructor. Next, the get method is scaffolded, which is used to load data in the grid. A post method is scaffolded to support inserting new records in the database. Also a put method for updating and a delete method for deleting. If you run the application now, you'll see a data grid populated with products through the web API action method. As you can see, it supports all CRUD operation, for example, editing. To enable paging, let's switch back to Visual Studio and enable the following options. We'll configure an initial page size of 10, and we'll configure the pager with configurable page sizes by adding the following code. And this will configure the grids pager with three different page sizes and additional information like current page, total number of pages, and so on. Now if we run the application, you'll see that the grid has configurable paging enabled. Let's enable sorting as well by adding the following settings. In this example, we enable the end user to sort on multiple columns. And we can add grouping by adding the following settings. By setting the auto expand all to false, the grid will only have one expanded row at a time. By specifying the group panel option, the grid will show a group panel where the end user can drop columns in that need to be grouped. It's important to mention that since the scaffolder enabled remote operations and the web API action methods are scaffolded with the load options, all sorting, grouping, filtering, and paging will be performed on the server to reduce network traffic and improve the end user experience. I'll run the app one last time and you can see the new features we just added. And that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to our DevExtreme data grid for .NET Core. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you have questions, please comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell to notify you about any new content. Thanks for watching, and thank you for choosing DevExpress.